Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the maiden edition of our inter-school debate. Right about now, I'll be rolling out the protocol for this debate. The Dean Student Affairs, the Sub-Dean Student Affairs, the Chief Judge and the entire panel of judges, staffs from our participating universities, the Chairman and the members of the Landmark University Student Council, our guest universities, that is the debaters from the various universities, namely Redimas University, Afer Babalola University, Adeleke University, and Thomas Adeomi University, and the host institution, Landmark University. Every other student and staff seated here, you are highly welcome. We welcome you to the maiden edition of our inter-school debate of Landmark University. You're highly welcome. You can put your hands together for yourselves. Okay. And to host you today is my humble self, Daniel Emanuel Emanuel. And the co-host, Olufemi Toluwanemi. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just to add to what my co-host here just said, we also want to appreciate the presence of the head of residency at the Student Affairs, you're welcome. Uh, the Council of Landmark University, you're welcome. And every other person uh, that we might have not been able to mention your name, we sincerely appreciate your presence here this morning. Uh, to get us further, I have the singular privilege and honor to invite the Dean Student Affairs for his opening remarks. Can we be upstanding as we receive the Dean Student Affairs? making today a reality. This is first of its kind in Lamarck University. And let me just introduce myself. I'm Dr. Anima Shan Razak Adekunle, the privileged Dean Student Affairs. It is great privilege this morning, and I'm not taking it for granted. I appreciate our father, the Chancellor Lamarck University, Dr. David Oyedepo, our pro chancellor, a very highly revered mama, Pastor Mrs. Faith Oyedepo, the vice chancellor of Lamarck University, Professor Charity Aremu, the deputy vice chancellor, Professor John Ojediron, the registrar of Lamarck University. Mr. Olushola Oinloye, then my subdean student affair, Mr. Ibitoye Oladayo, the head of unit present, the Shaman Student Council, King Oshoba Elijah, the vice person female, Queen, Queen Gospel, and the, the vice chairman male, Mikoeng Awe. Our distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the invited schools, and our Mabel King and Queen, you are well, all welcome to this maiden edition of inter-school debate. This program is spearheaded by the Lamarck University Student Council. In other climb, they are called Student Union. But in Lamarck University, we call them Lamarck University Student Representative. Lamarck University is a private Christian university affiliated with the Living Faith Church worldwide. It is a royal academy where solution provider, pathfinders, trailblazers, next generation leaders, and army of reformers are developed through a high quality, practically useful training that emphasize on value and knowledge. One of the hottest buzzword in technology right now is artificial intelligence, and for good reason. 
Several inventions and developments that were previously one fun in science, fiction, and cartoon have begun to materialize during the past few years. Artificial intelligence is a technique for teaching a computer, a robot operated by a computer or software to think critically and creatively. AI or artificial intelligence is achieved through examining the cognitive process and the pattern of the human brain. The topic of today's debate Development of artificial intelligence, should it be encouraged, is particularly pertinent because there has been much controversy regarding artificial intelligence, despite its clear benefit in practically all sectors of life, including medical. I am confident that the participants in this debate will do credit to the subject, and at the end of it all, we will all have a better grasp of artificial intelligence. The participating schools are carefully chosen based on a number of criteria, but most significantly on their ranking and visions. I am on, be, um, I am on behalf of the management of Lamarck University, appreciate the deans of students and management of this institution for releasing their students for this event. In addition, I believe that this program will provide a strong foundation for our visual interaction, teamwork, and connection. For the continued assistance the Director of Student Affairs at Lamarck University have received and always received, I would like to express my gratitude to the management ably led by our charming Vice Chancellor, Professor Charity Aremu. I also appreciate the education panel members coming today and taking their time to be here. Finally, I want to express my gratitude and administration, admiration for AUSS, sorry, because I am Chairman Council of AUSS, that's why it keeps out like that. Finally, I want to express my gratitude and admiration for AUSC, that's the Landmark University Council, their courage in bringing this up. And I pray that God will continue to increase them, multiply them. They will not fail in this assignment and in their academic. I wish you all impactful and memorable event. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Can we appreciate the Dean Student Affairs Landmark University once again? Thank you so much for that wonderful opening remark, sir. Thank you so much. We sincerely do appreciate it. Right about now, we shall be moving to the main aim of our gathering here today. And like we all said, this is an inter school debate competition. Uh, and the team is something that is not so new, perhaps, it's something we are all aware of. AI, artificial intelligence, is an emerging subject of discussion. And we have the topic here today, development of artificial intelligence, should it be encouraged or not? Today you'll be listening to various persons, you know, share their views about this, and we will learn from them. But to get us started, uh, I would like you to join me as I welcome our panel of judges to the table to start with the chief judge, Professor Ajishegiri, the chief judge. Uh, Dr. Akomodi Olushola, Dr. Fakinle Bamidili, uh, Mr. Noah Olaibi, all from Landmark University. And also, we have from our other uh, neighboring university who are wonderfully present here this morning, we have Ms. Anuluapo Oladimeji from Adelike University. We also have Mr. Stephen Paul from Thomas Adeumi University. Also with us today is Ms. Adetola Adeshino from Abuad, Afe Babalola University. Again, we also have today on our panel of judges, Ms. Bankole Oluwafemi, Ridimas University. 
I want to believe they are joining us right about now. Please welcome with us the panel of judges. I'll take the names again. Professor Adjishegiri, the Chief Judge. You're welcome, sir. Dr. Olushola Komode, you're welcome. Dr. Fred Peters, you're welcome. Dr. Fakinle Bamidele, you're welcome. Mr. Nua Olaibi, you're welcome, all from Landmark University. And we also have from other universities present here today, Ms. Anulwako Oladimiji from Adeleke University, you're welcome. Mr. Stephen Paul from Thomas Adeumi University, you're most welcome. Again, we have Ms. Adetola Adeshino from Abuad, Afe Babalola University. And then last on my uh, list here is Ms. Bankole Uluwafemi, Redeemers University, and Dr. Ayeni Banji. Thank you and thank you. And to get us started this morning, I would love to call on Dr. Ayeni Banji, who is going to intimate uh, debaters today of how this is going to go, and then we'll start. Do I have Dr. Ayeni Banji with us here? Like I said earlier, we have today a topic before us, development of artificial intelligence. Should it be encouraged or not? And, a participat and the participating universities are Bowen. Okay, sorry. University. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to appreciate our judges, our panels. God bless you, sir, Zama, for being here. And also the management representative and also the dean. God bless you, sir. And um, for everyone attending, you're duly welcome. Um, we all know why we're here, so I want me to go into the details. But please, we need the sanctity of the environment around here because when they're making motions, it's possible that we get riddled up with um, emotions. When the judges or the panel tell us to try and keep it quiet, please be so that we can hear what our different um, debaters are saying clearly. Also, um, I pray that at the end of this event, we have a reason to say it was a wonderful event. Thank you. God bless you. Into the debate properly. And the panel of judges will be rolling out the schools to begin with. And the debate will start with the round one. where you are going to have uh, a debate. I mean, the issue of artificial intelligence is something that is uh, common to everybody. Uh, you may be a lawyer, you may be an engineer, you may be any other aspect of uh, the other. I'm taking the two sides, okay? It's all applicable. Without it, we don't have automation. And uh, without automation, you cannot open the, the door. So uh, we need to know that uh, when we are going to be judging, it is the application that we will judge. 
Okay, yes, it's good that uh, we show the probe well, the use of the language, quite a number of other things, but if you come out, for instance, and tell me that uh, well, you use um, artificial intelligence for programming, for this, that, and all the other things. Sorry, okay, uh, from my window. And I happened to know, okay, I am in mechatronics. So, you know, um, it's good for you to concentrate on the application. What does it do? What, how relevant is it to human? So I have given you the pros. I will now give you, you know I'm a judge here. So you have the pros and the con. There are penalties, okay? Um, there are about 10, 11, and things like that, all right? If we ask you to stop and you go on, you risk the chance of scoring zero, okay? That, that is whatever it is that you have said may not make any you know, contribution to it. So um, orderliness is also very important. Actually, it's essential. So I want us to take note of it. And uh, I possibly believe in you much more than you believe in yourself because there is something that we are known for which you can take home. The capacity of your brain is about 2,000 terabytes. That's what we carry around. And we want to see the output. May God help us. You are welcome. Representatives from each universities should just stand up and indicate representatives from different universities. So those for the motion should be at the left hand side while those against the motion should just remain at the right hand side. Do we understand? Those for the motion, my left hand side. Those against the motion, my right hand side. You could fill the seats there, yes. So you have six minutes to tender your points and to prove to us your course if artificial intelligence is needed or not. And we'll be starting. We'll be starting up with the first university, which is Afe Babalola University. All right, so Afe Babalola University is starting with us this morning. And then um, the first speaker has six minutes, five minutes for your presentation, and one minute to round up. The second speaker has three minutes, two minutes for the presentation, and oh, sorry, the second speaker has four minutes, three minutes for your presentation, and one minute for rounding up. Uh, I want to know if the uh, time keep, keeper is yes. okay. We're ready, right? Okay, so let's have the first speaker. Please, can we appreciate her as she comes forward?
Justin, I'm ready, sir. People who fear artificial intelligence fear innovation. They fear change. They f have a fear of the unknown, of the unknown tomorrow. As a matter of fact, in the words of co-founder of Microsoft, Bill, Bill Gates, it is said that although artificial intelligence has a number of lapses and errors, with placement of correct legislation and ethical measures, we can underestimate, we can suppress the bad side and oppress we can suppress the bad side and uphold the benefits. And on this note, I would love to start my day by exchanging obeisance with Mr. Chairman, Honorable Panel of Judges, accurate timekeeper, co-debaters, and my ever-listening audience. My name is Chiwete Clara and Kimakonam Science, a bona fide student of Afa Babalola University, standing before you today to support the motion which says that should the development of artificial intelligence be encouraged. The more point I'll be bringing to you today is growth. It is in our human capacity and our human behavior that we are forever on the search to satisfy our insatiable needs. For this purpose, we have found innovative ideas to make life more comfortable and more pleasurable for us. Now, it has seen by precedence that we've moved from the Stone Age, Iron Age, Middle Age, Information Age, Computer Age, and finally, Artificial Intelligence Age. Now, the question I throw to us, the audience today, is why stop? It is shown that, it is shown by, by documents, it is shown by researchers and, and documents that although the artificial intelligence have lapses and have lapses and corrections in which it could be made, but yet artificial intelligence is still at its infant age. Artificial intelligence is just one of the thousands of experiments in which humans have conducted, such as the diabetic insulin and the building of the, of the light bulb. But this doesn't mean that just because of the major or minor setbacks in which these experiments have surfaced, the experiments have been totally stopped and are development restricted. How much more artificial intelligence, which is already embedded in our system. On this note, I want to move up to my next point, the daily application of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, when we, when we hear the topic or the concept of artificial intelligence, to the layman, they think of multi-system, robots and computer machines with super intelligence. However, we already have artificial intelligence in our daily system. We find this when you open Netflix and you want to watch a movie, when you, stroke through, when you scroll through TikTok and Instagram, and then you have to go through your live feeds. Artificial intelligence is already with us today. We cannot go back, we can only develop it. Looking at the, looking at the lab season which artificial intelligence has at this early stage, will be enough evidence and drive an incentive for the for developers of artificial intelligence to move forward and try po pointers on what they should be correcting. In area of sports, before I go on with this sport, with this point, I would love to bring it to you today that artificial intelligence can never completely replace humans. In the area of sports, we have in the most popular sports in the world, the VAR in football. However, with the incidents and the, and the intentional addition of the VAR to the game, this has not led, this has not led to the total removal. There's still the inclusion of the flexible human mind. And this is also to say that in banking and finance, I can't imagine how many times I will have issues with my bank and then how many times I will be able or have the energy to go to the physical branch store. But then my bank has Leo from UBA. We can run simple programs in, in order to allow the human workers to focus on bigger problems in areas of education. I stand here today as one of the most avid users of one of the most popular AIs and, and the search engine, Google. Even whoever stands on this podium today will have consulted this AI. And even the deans, even the deans of this honorable institution who have stood in front of us today have spoken numerous benefits of AI. Now the question that keeps on that I keep on trying to you today is why stop now? In areas of education, it has been proven by Grand Research Review that the uh, that inclusion of artificial intelligence to the students' knowledge the inclusion of artificial intelligence to students' knowledge have decreased their anxiety by 20% and increased their, their success rate by 30%. This shows that, to a very reasonable extent, artificial intelligence has been beneficial to education. And, and exclusion of 
artificial intelligence in the 21st century will not be reasonable. As this debate is even past 16 years late, because artificial intelligence is already with us in the society. Time how up. then do we stop? How up. then do we make the artificial intelligence Time stagnant? Up. A summary. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> now the supporting uh, presenter. Standing on the already existing protocol, my colleague has already stated the importance of AI and why the development of AI should be encouraged. I'm going to give more points. Nigeria is a country that the economy focuses more on energy and agriculture. AI has shown, scientific researchers have shown that AI has made an impact in agriculture. The agricultural implications of AI can be, would be seen in the 2030 and 2050. AI powered machines can also determine soil and crop health, provide fertilizers, recommendation, monitor the weather, and can also determine the quality of crop. In India, over 7,000 farmers are using the technology to monitor the health of their crop, perform quality control, and test. So AI is a machine that is an all-rounder. Most humans have the capacity to work for only seven hours. AI is a machine that can work for over 48 hours without running down. That is why we need AI, because the development of AI helps in the agricultural sector. The second point I'm going to give today is AI, AI impact on the environment. Studies have shown that AI has an AI, AI enable, enables the accomplishment of the 17 SDGs, focusing more on number seven, 11, and 13, that is poverty and climate change. It shows that in countries that that show that have high emission of carbon. With the invention of AI and development of AI, of AI in the production of automobile very with the invention of AI and in encouragement of AI with the, in the production of AI motor, mobiles, it shows that there will be low carbon emissions, thereby protecting the environment. Also, AI development can be seen in pharmacy. We have the Genome-Wide Association. This is also known as the GWAS. The GWAS is a scientific technology that helps doctors to detect some genes that would not be seen in a normal computer system. This helps people, patients who are probably 18 years to detect that they have life-threatening diseases like cancer or other diseases to know their life expectancy and to cure it because if in the, early, in the early stages of cancer, it's easier to protect it, it's easier to reduce it than waiting to the long time where you have side effects and symptoms. The last point I'm going to state is zero risk. Most times we want to go to the moon, we want to go down to, to, want to, go down to the ocean and other things. It's easier for AI because the, the, metals that made, the metals that are used to build AI helps in protecting them to go, and then it reaches zero risk because no humans die. In terms of diffusing, diffusing a bomb, going to spaces, exploring the deepest part of the ocean, it's way better than sending machines because AI, they have the capacity to retain information, they have the capacity to make press, precise decisions without attaching sentiments and all to it. Thank you. Yes. That was a very beautiful and insightful debate. Can you put your hands together for them? We could do better for them. Standing, like she said, if we've started, why are we stopping now? So while for the against the motion, we'll be inviting Redeemers University to kick off. First speaker, six minutes, uh, five minutes for your core presentation, one minute to round up. Supporting speaker has 
four minutes, three minutes for major presentation, one minute to round up. Thank you. In March 2016, over 200 million people watched a professional challenge on human intelligence versus artificial intelligence, which was hosted by Google. What was the outcome of this challenge? Before we proceed, honor is a priority. Good day, reliable moderator, prestigious panel of judges, trustworthy timekeeper, my co-debaters, and the most attentive audience. I am Vicente Adioshun, a student of Redimas University, and I'm here to oppose the notion stating clearly, development of artificial intelligence, should it be encouraged? Before we can understand the, this intellectually stimulating topic, there's a need to look at the context, that is the idea behind AI. What is human intelligence? Human intelligence can be defined as the capacity of the mind to acquire knowledge, ideas, principles, meaning understanding them and putting them to practice. While artificial intelligence, according to Professor John Malkatin, who coined the word in the 1950s, he defined it to be the science and engineering of making intelligence machines. What why should artificial intelligence be discouraged? Yes, I agree with the supporting side that it contributes to growth. Yes, it contributes, I'm, I add zero risks. Hmm. When it comes to artificial intelligence, it can be encouraged, yes, because of heuristic classification, expert systems, you talk about computer vision, game playing, you look at understanding natural language and even in terms of speech recognition. But why should this be discouraged? Because there are so many negative impacts that we cannot overlook. Number one, artificial intelligence an environment that artificial intelligence creates an environment of frustration and disappointment for human effort. Like I asked before, what is going to be the outcome? What was the outcome of the challenge in March 2016? In March 2016, Lisedo, who happens to be an 18-time world champion, decided to def defend human intelligence against artificial intelligence by playing with an AlphaGo code, which is an AI machine, and he lost 4-1. And as a result of this, in 2019, he gave up as a result of AI, and he retired from playing that sport, stating clearly that artificial intelligence is an entity that cannot be defeated. How many more people would have been discouraged or disappointed? Just imagine a machine replacing 700 people. Another thing I will add is this, AI is subject to bias. In computer science, there's a process called KDD, knowledge discovery in databases. So if, there is, if the input is wrong or it is biased, automatically the result of the system is going to be biased. If you look at it critically, if there is a biased input in an AI system, then one thing that you're going to discover is this, it is also going to lead to a biased output, thereby leading to unfairness, injustice, racial discrimination, and even political unfairness. If you look at it critically, these are some of the things that AI has to do. So, like my supporting side has said, AI does not come with zero risks. There are negative impacts that cannot be overlooked. In conclusion, I strongly believe and I affirm that artificial intelligence should be discouraged with discretion. 
And if it is used at all, it must be done within the boundaries of well-regulated, well-defined regulatory policies. And at this point, it should also be controlled, and when it is used, it must be done within the boundaries of ethical and moral awareness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we have the supporting speaker from Redeemers University. Standing on existing protocol, I am Victor Udulate, a representative of Redeemers University, and I'll be speaking against the motion Artificial development of artificial intelligence, should it be encouraged? Alan Turing is seen as the father of artificial intelligence, first because of the Turing test, which has been a criterion for determining what artificial intelligence is in the first place. Also, he was known for several quotes that are still used in the field to this day. As a result, I'll be using his first name, Alan, as the backbone of the thoughts I would convey before you today. First is the A, aristocracy. Aristocracy is a system where a privileged few are given the means of control of specific areas of life that gives them an unfair amount of power in the society. Artificial intelligence can lead to this in two ways. The first is capital. Artificial intelligence is capital intensive. Very few uh, participants can engage in the race for the development of artificial intelligence. You have the examples of Google, you have the example of Microsoft with ChatGPT, and you have the example of the BARD. We move to patents. Patent is the second way an aristocracy can come up because the few companies that are actually successful at developing artificial intelligence go on to patent it, in other words, protect it legally to prevent it from being replicated without due compensation to the patent holders. This where only those who developed it and patented it would be able to control artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence would do only their bidding. Moving on, we have the L, which is the lack of emotion, lack of empathy, lack of intuition. There are given systems and ways in which human beings can find solutions to problems. Artificial intelligence is li limited to these restrictions. However, human beings have the ability to break out of these confines and arrive at creative and unique solutions. Artificial intelligence cannot do this because artificial intelligence cannot feel, it cannot hope, it cannot love. Moving on to annihilation, annihilation of the workforce and the environment. The workforce in the sense that artificial intelligence is capable of carrying out specific tasks at a rate that is better than human beings, faster than human beings, and more efficient overall. When capitalists find this phenomena, they would go on to invest in artificial intelligence instead of their human counterparts. I'm not saying artificial intelligence will replace human beings, but the increase in efficiency will reduce the number of human beings that can work. Lastly, we have neocolonialism. Neocolonialism is a system where a stronger country militarily, financially, and economically controls a less powerful one in the same regard. And artificial intelligence will only go to expand the gulf between the haves and the have-nots. Lastly, with these things I have said, we can see features that human beings have that artificial intelligence does not have. One of them is fallibility, the ability to make mistakes. Artificial intelligence is infallible, but Alan Turing that I said earlier said that if a machine is said to be infallible, it can then say, be said that Thank that you. same machine Thank you. is intelligent. Thank you. Can we once again appreciate Reedy Mass University for that wonderful presentation? <laughs> I believe the ground is heating up and we are catching that that, 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 that heat that we need, isn't it? Who is with me? Thank you so much for your audience. So um, as we all know, we have three universities who are supporting this motion, and we have, I mean, two universities on the ground who are supporting this motion, and we have three universities who are against this motion. And so far, we have taken one for and one against. So to put a balance, I would like to invite another university for this same round one, 
who will be taken against. And then we have the round two, one for and one against. Please join me as I welcome Thomas at Dewumi University. The first speaker, six minutes, five minutes for your major presentation, one minute to round up, and supporting uh, speaker, four minutes for your presentation, three to uh, give your major presentation, and one to round up. Thank you. Good morning. I would like to start with an ominous warning by Stephen, by Stephen Hawkins. And he said, our success in creating an effective AI would either be the greatest history in the, would either be the greatest event in the history of human civilization or the worst, as we do not know if we'll be infinitely helped by AI or sidelined or eventually consumably destroyed by the development of AI in itself. To continue, I would like to greet my panel of judges my um, fellow co-debaters and my highly esteemed audience. Now, I would like to point out the disadvantages of developing AI. Now, let me explain certain concepts in itself. Now, artificial intelligence is actually, um, is actually the simulation of human intelligence by computer systems, mostly machines. And then when we talk about development, now development was defined by Cambridge Dictionary as the process of bringing into existence something new or, or, um, or furthering or um, increasing the efficiency of the thing in existence in itself. Now, when we talk about developing AI in itself, it is saying, should we actually stop at where we are or should we continue developing? And when it comes to AI in itself, we actually have different types. We have the narrow technology, the artificial narrow intelligence, which can only do things that it is programmed to do. We have the general intelligence, which simulates human intelligence in itself. Then we have the super intelligence, which is actually that one has it has a thinking and a cognitive ability similar to that of human and it can do far better than that of humans in itself now if you are saying should the development be continued you are saying should we actually give ai the ability to be autonomous and have a thinking ability that far supersedes that of humans themselves now i would like to show you the various ways it can affect us as they as nigerians in itself as a developing country now let's tackle the issue of unemployment in itself now according to uh, According to an article by icrnigeria.com, it actually pointed out the fact that we have 75,000 commercial buses in Lagos. That is 75,000 drivers and 75,000 conductors themselves. That's close to 140,000 people employed by the transport sector. Now imagine involving artificial intelligence in the transport sector in Lagos. That is close to a, a 150,000 people will be displaced if Lagos State actually decides to go for driverless cars or to, to implement AI. In, in his transport sector, in his economy. And imagine displacing 150,000 people who, who mostly are illiterate and who cannot easily adapt to the ever-changing world they found themselves in, in this sense. And to even be able to learn on, on how to operate the AI, you need to have enough money to even acquire the skill set that is required to operate the AI in itself. So now you are displacing 150,000 people into the economy. And that would result into mass social ills and problems we have in our community in itself. Now let's talk about the issue of AI enabling terrorism in itself. Now, Nigeria, according to Wikipedia, Nigeria has actually been tackling Boko Haram since 2009. And this same Boko Haram have not even gotten their hands on AI enabled tools yet. Now imagine Boko Haram using semi-autonomous drones, using um, semi-autonomous helicopters, using remote controlled helicopters, instead of using suicide bombers. Imagine AI, uh, imagine Boko Haram being able to send um, drones to actually um, bomb locations that would lead to a catastrophic eff effect on our safety as Nigerian citizens in itself. And it is so clear to us that our defense system is not ready to actually deal with such threats yet because this same defense system has been tackling these insurgencies since 2009. And now imagine if they become AI powered, if they have, if they have an efficient way of actually carrying out their destructive their destructive means and their destructive intentions, that will result into more problem for us. And as a country, we are not ready in, in itself. And then there are no regulations regarding the development of AI as, at the point in which it is. Meaning, I can actually employ someone, I can employ someone to actually develop an AI for me that I can use for whatever event, whatever intention I have in mind. I can, I can employ someone, I can find a programmer who would 
um, develop an AI for me that I can actually use to hold a whole city in hostage because I can threaten the whole city that a bomb will be detonated, there will be an automated strike on the place at a certain time if certain amount is not paid to me in myself. Now that is putting the whole nation in itself or the whole city in itself at risk. And then there is, as a country in itself, we are clearly not ready. And then the issue of AI, the issue of AI in itself, not basically having human emotions. Now you can, I mean you can actually program an AI for a benefit purpose. Let's say the essence of your AI is to maybe um, cure a disease like, um, to, cure, to cure a disease like cancer, that's the program. Now your AI can actually decide that. The way it will, co it will cure that disease is to actually thank kill you. every person with, oh, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Can we have your supporting speaker, please? Four minutes, then three, three for your major presentation and one minute for your roundup. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Obafemi Oluwatoduni. I'm a 200 level software engineering student at Thomas Adeum University. And I'm going to be adding to the points given by my fellow co-debaters. Now, honestly, I don't want to bore anyone with the complexities of what AI is because I feel like my co-debaters have already done justice to that part. But, you know, before I go into my main points, I want to challenge us as Nigerians. You see, Nigerians, we have this innate behavior of preferring natural products to artificial, to synthetic products. Everybody always wants natural hair products. We all want natural skincare products. We all want real leather for our shoes, real cotton for our clothes. So why don't we apply the same level of disapproval to artificial intelligence when we have the same natural intelligence inbuilt in every single one of us? <laughs> see, see, look, okay. Now, this is a very bad behavior, yeah? This is very bad. I'm going to be telling you why in my two major points. Now, firstly, development, or would I say evolution of artificial intelligence equally means the, the extinction of humanity. Now, get this. We are developing robots, artificial intelligence, to think, behave, and act the same way humans do, but 10 times faster, 10 times better, and 10 times more efficient. Please remember these three points. 10 times better, 10 times faster, and 10 times more efficient. Now, let me ask you, why do you need me? If you have something that will do exactly what I do, 10 times better, 10 times faster, 10 times more efficient, why do we need you to come and present in a debate? If you have something that will do exactly what you're doing, 10 times better, 10 times faster, 10 times more efficient, why does your school need you? <laughs> why do you need your school? <laughs> See, when, when AI gets to the apex level of evolution, there will be no more need for humans. I want everybody to understand that. Now, secondly, AI, Artificial intelligence is not error proof. They are very much prone to errors. I'm a software engineering student, so I understand what I'm saying. It is very possible for bugs and errors to be in a program without a single trace. It's very possible for bugs to be developed in a program without a single trace. Now, I I've seen videos online of dentists, of robots now performing dental surgery. I find it quite funny how human beings, in their natural, distrusting manner, will trust a robot to perform surgery on you. See, it's, it's quite unusual, to be very honest, how you'd have such high level of dependence on robots when all it takes for things to go bad is one wrong line of code. We say one wrong line of code. <laughs> now, understand this. See, now, imagine AI being inculcated in things like military. <laughs> imagine AI handling nuclear launch codes, handling our traffic, driving our cars, handling sensitive information like bank details, transaction codes, all this could lead to a very destructive and catastrophic end because, ladies and gentlemen, once again, all it takes is one wrong line of code. We can do better. That was an amazing presentation. But decorum, please. Thank you, thank you. The ground is really getting heated. I can feel the energy. So, moving forward, first off, there's an adjustment to the program. We'll be collapsing the round one and the round two of the debate together, and we'll, do it, we'll be doing just one round of the debate. So, we'll be inviting 
Adeleke University, who is for the motion. Please put your hands together for them as we welcome their chief speaker. We could do better than that. Booking Ubers, weather forecasting, automated teller machines, smartphones with face and speech recognition. These are all tools of artificial intelligence to be subsequently discussed and, are, are, and addressed as AI. Good day, panel of judges, Chief Judge, Mr. Chairman Sir, our career timekeeper, co-debaters, and the highly esteemed audience. I am Adeyemo Amira Adedui, a 400-level law student and a representative of, the, of Adeleke University. And I'm proposing the motion, well paraphrased, that the development of artificial intelligence should be encouraged. So, without further ado, I will proceed to tell us the, in, the individual areas that artificial intelligence has helped humanity and the individual areas that it has benefited us. First is the business sector. Second, the banking sector. Third, it's automation and reduced need for human intervention. Fourth, is the provision of job opportunities, unlike everybody else has said. So first, the business sector. Yes. It has, artificial intelligence has uncovered better ways to serve our customers. The advent of online shopping has saved us the stress of moving through aisles and shopping. I feel like half of this crowd, half the population of this crowd, prefers online shopping to walking through aisles in the market, don't we? Banking in the banking sector, the automated teller machines have been placed in various points in different places and cities in the world. How many of us would like to go back to the traditional method of queuing at banks for bank, bank tellers? We all realized during this cash during this cash insurgency, how hard it is for people to stand in lines, how hard it is on people. I'm going to leave us to ponder on that. Automation. Artificial intelligence computes, automates, and derives results on its own without human intervention. I'm not saying that artificial intelligence does not need humans. Don't let's forget, humans built AI. AI did not build AI. Also, Artificial intelligence, for example, self-driving cars that can go on end for 30 hours straight without human intervention. Let's not forget the automatic customer care service provided by MTN. Provision of job opportunities. Like I earlier said, artificial intelligence does not make artificial intelligence. Humans make artificial intelligence. Do we want to disregard the job of these engineers that make artificial intelligence? Let's not forget, we book Ubers with apps. This is a tool of artificial intelligence. Uber drivers get their jobs from artificial intelligence. The owners of online shops and businesses, I would leave us to ponder on this fact. And I'll tell us, what would the world look like without all these tools mentioned of artificial intelligence? I'm Adeyemo Amira Adedouin, a 400 level law student, and I am still standing on the point without hesitation that artificial intelligence should be encouraged and its development should continue. Thank you. <laughs> the supporting speaker of Adeleke University. Please put your hands together. Confusion, contradiction, bewilderment are never lacking in this house over this particular issue. Development of artificial intelligence, should it be encouraged? Members of the house, panel of adjudicators, my amiable staff members, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ogunji Nicholas Onyechine Bugi Jr., a 300-level civil engineering student representing Adelike University, second speaker of the team proposition, supporting and standing for this debatable topic. Mr. Matthew Lynch of the Ed Advocate says in, said in one of his articles, and I quote, education does not retract from classroom instruction, rather it enhances it in so many ways. Mr. Matthew Lynch went ahead to summarize the usefulness of artificial intelligence in the world of education today. Personalization, members of the house, you would agree with me that it is not all teachers that can be able to access the learning needs of their students, but with the help of artificial intelligence, these machines or systems are designed to adapt to the learning needs of the students. They record, they grade them, they pinpoint their strengths and weaknesses and send back feed and send feedbacks to the lecturers or the 
teachers in charge? Are we talking about assistive technology? Members of the house, there are a lot of students out there, special needs students out there. There are a lot of students with certain disabilities. They have dreams just like I and you. Members of the house, they want to make it in life. But it is difficult for them because of their disabilities. But with the help of artificial intelligence, these things has been made, have been made easier for the members of the house. They can be able to achieve their dreams just like I and you. Are we talking about virtual learning or global access? Members of the house, we all were present during the 2019-2020 coronavirus pandemic. What happened? A lot of academic institution found it, institutions found it hard to move forward, but yet still, with the presence of artificial intelligence, a lot of them conducted examinations online. A lot of them conducted mid-semesters online. And a lot of them also conducted convocation programs online. Members of the house, are we talking about the health sector? Preliminary diagnosis, you'd agree with me that all these doctors or medical practitioners working in the hospitals are humans just like I and you. And you don't expect them to function 16 to 24 hours without resting. Members of the house, that is why artificial intelligence plays a great role in reducing the workload on these people. What does the patient have to do? Simply table your case, your symptoms, they record it, and send it and send the feedback to the doctor or the medical practitioner in charge. Are we talking about assisted surgery? Members of the house, you don't expect surgeons to keep standing for 16 to 24 hours, all in the name of surgery. But with the help of these ro programmed robots or machines, the, the, the activities of the surgeons the activities of the surgeons are being controlled and monitored, and these machines alert the medical practitioners or the surgeons when they are making mistakes or going out of norms. Are we talking about the world of entertainment? Ah, come on. Members of the house, a lot of us play pre revolutionary soccer, a lot of us play FIFA, a lot of us play Call of Duty. All these things are products of artificial intelligence. What are we waiting for, members of the house? Are you still doubting the relevance or the importance of artificial intelligence? Members of the house, discouraging artificial intelligence is like condemning the productivity and intelligence of man. I'll leave us with this quote from Professor, from, from Professor, from Professor Jan Lekon, and it says, our intelligence Thank is what you. makes us human, but artificial intelligence is the extension of that quality. Thank you, and God bless you. <laughs> Round of applause for Adilike University. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. All right, so, so far we've heard from four schools, for and against the motion, development of artificial intelligence, should it be encouraged or not? Okay, just like my co-host um, here has said something, I just want to share more light on what she said the other time. So what we're saying is, we're going to be having all universities speak now, and then uh, we'll be taking questions and answers afterwards, and then there'll be a last round after, after then, just one person and one minute from each of these schools, just one person, f just to summarize all uh, your uh, prepositions that you have said. I wouldn't know if I'm clear enough. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. So at this point in time, we'll be inviting Landmark University. <laughs> The Chief Speaker of Landmark University, you are up for your presentation now. My opponent said that artificial intelligence does not build artificial intelligence. Yesterday, my brother working at OpenAI had a meeting where ChatGPT built a model on a build an artificial intelligence model. Are we already getting to the point where artificial intelligence is building artificial intelligence? I'll leave you to think about that. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Wiz Good day, Mr. Chairman. Good day, panel of judges. My amiable timekeeper, co-debaters. My name is Wisdom Daniel, a 500 level electrical engineering student <laughs> of Landmark University. And I'm here against the motion that artificial intelligence should not be encouraged. Now, Artificial intelligence, I wouldn't want to bore you with what it is, as um, my earlier co colleagues have done justice to that already. Now, what are the disadvantages? Why should artificial intelligence not be encouraged? Um, a lecturer of mine once told me of how a, a thesis, a project work he did, for took him three years, took 10 minutes with an AI model. Now, while that may sound applaudable, what is it actually doing? What is the effect on the younger generations? A new student that wants to come up and perform that same thesis, rather than using his God-given talent, rather than using what the innate ability he has, 
who depend on a model. Now that leads to self-reliance on artificial intelligence and total reliance on artificial intelligence. Let me tell you, artificial intelligence leads to intellectual laziness. Uh, uh, my opponent also mentioned of how artificial intelligence have reduced anxiety of students by 22% and increased the success rate by 30%. I want to, I want to put it to you today that that is not totally true. Yes, as human beings, we all like easy things. We all want things to go easier. But do you know the effect it has on the younger generations? It reduces the God-given capacity to process and to think. It reduces creativity in the minds of people. Now, musicians are no longer writing songs. People are no longer writing what they want themselves. What are they doing? They'll just get an AI model to generate content from them, and they are singing. What is that doing? What is the effect on the music today? What is the effect on the God-given mind that we have as individuals. I put it to you that artificial intelligence has brought a lot of concerns. Let's talk about the ethical concerns of artificial intelligence. Um, my opponent talked about the recommendation system of Netflix. Now, let me tell you something. The Netflix recommendation system is built based on the watches you have, the watch hours, the movies you look at, and those data. Tell me, where they got, did they get your consent before they used it? Now, this is it. Artificial intelligence has led to breach of privacy. We are no longer sure about our data. It is no longer private to us. We no longer have full control over our data. Now, what is artificial intelligence doing? There's lead to the breach of privacy. Now, I bring it to you again. Artificial intel the concerns of artificial intelligence. We're talking about truth. Artificial intelligence has led us to doubt what actually is genuine. Talk about deepfake. There was recently um, the sc scandal of the deepfake media between the presidential candidate and one a respected man of God in Nigeria today. And he came out denying it. And there has been the issue of is that artificial intelligence? Now tell me, now people are no longer trusted. Now something comes out and you don't even know if it is genuine or not. What is truth? It has led to a decrease of integrity. Artificial intelligence, there is currently no, as it's a new and upcoming field, there are currently no ethical boundaries, no standards, no rules to set in place for this artificial intelligence model. Now, when something is done, a, a model is produced, and something, a music, a fake content is produced, who do we blame? Who is to blame for the damages that artificial intelligence has caused? Who do you meet for the damages that artificial intelligence has caused? Artificial intelligence, I stand on the motion that artificial intelligence should not be encouraged. It should not be further encouraged. My opponent also mentioned of how the fact that, yes, we created it, and so there is a limit to which we can get. But mind you, we are human beings, and human beings have insatiable desire to make things continue. Tell me, are we going to ever stop the production of artificial intelligence? Are we going to stop where we are already? They are already proposing the motion of how it should be encouraged. I tell you, there would be no stop to how far we can go with artificial intelligence. There would be no limit to what we can do. And it will get to a point where our true existence would no longer be considered necessary. We would become eliminated because there is no need for we human beings again. What makes you a person? We talk about the emotions, we talk about the will, we talk about the intellect. If at this stage we are already giving emotions, we are already giving this attribute to robots, then what is our, the purpose of our existence? Why Thank then you. are we needed? Thank what you. then is our needed point? Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I conclude on this notion that artificial intelligence should no longer be encouraged and it should be stopped. Thank you. Put our hands together again for him. We're welcoming the supporting speaker of Landmark University. Please put your hands big, big together. Distinguished judges, ladies and gentlemen, standing in an already established protocol, I would like to start it. Artificial intelligence isn't magic, but data. <laughs> Artificial intelligence isn't magic or, or, but data. I'm here to oppose the motion that says that the development of artificial intelligence should be encouraged. As humans, we should know when to stop. One of the reasons I'd like to start is security. 
it's quite naive as we humans to think that artificial intelligence, because of the technology landscape, is secure. With a show of hands, how many of you have been hacked? How many of you have gotten a spam mail? I'm sure every single one can testify to that. Well, you with so little valuables have attracted the attention of cyber criminals. What says artificial intelligence that concentrates powerful resources will even attract them more and more. And it's a joke to think that we can be safe. It was created by humans, for God's sake. What are the what are the boundaries put in place? What are the security measures put in place to stop that? <laughs> let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not deceive ourselves. There are so many security risks associated with artificial intelligence. Another point I would like to, uh, to note is the loss of jobs associated with artificial intelligence. People have come and told us that artificial intelligence creates jobs rather than take them. Some arguments say that artificial intelligence will be, used, will be deployed in dangerous environments to keep humans all safer. But what have we seen in reality? What have we seen in practice? We have seen an influx of easy to build chatbots taking the jobs of customer service employees. We have seen the influx of expert trading system displacing um, traders and accountants. We have seen bookkeeping AIs doing the same and even recently code assistants threatening tech jobs. Another point I would like to state, another point I would like to state and emphasize on is intellectual laziness, which my earlier speaker emphasized on already. When does it stop, really? When does it stop? Who is going to further development when the current generation meant to be responsible with it are becoming intellectually lazy? Think of your children's generation. Think of your jobs. Think of yourself, who is going to protect you from big op corporations when they start racing to build the latest artificial intelligence system to take, to take your data? One of my, our colleagues here said growth is a necessity. And where, how, how should we know, why should we stop now if we already started growing? You are human, you know when to stop. There are de ne negative things that grow and we can objectively say now is the time to stop. We've seen all this development. We are not saying we should erase the former development. We are saying we should put a stop before it comes to something we don't understand. We are saying we Thank should you. stop while we can see. Thank you. So we've come to an end of the round one. Can we put our hands together for the participants for the various universities? They did an amazing work. So now we'll be moving on to questions and remarks. So from everything you've listened to from this round one, any question either for or against the audience, anyone, the panelists, the staffs? Any question, area of confusion? Remarks, things you like to say. Yes, you can. Please just come forward. Please just start by introducing yourself and your question. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chiwete Science. I'm here with, uh, forget I'm a member of the supporting team, please. I'm here with a question for the opposing team. I noticed that one of the students that stood on the opposing team was a software engineering student. If you are opposing the development of the AI, that is killing your job. Then two, then two, someone from Lamarck University made a statement with regard to ChatGPT writing a code to build artificial intelligence. I'm here to tell you that ChatGPT's basic rule is to build on existing human input in places like Google Safari. Meaning that if I should type in my question for my research paper, all it does is pick different definitions from different websites, which are already imputed by humans. They do not, ChatGPT's current position does not create another AI. Two. Three. If you're opposing the development of AI because it makes us more lazy than humans, then that means we should oppose the, op the development of computers and iPhones. Let's start using typewriters. Um, I'm not here to debate, so I will not go on with further points, and I hope you guys will anticip anticipate me in the next round. Thank you. Thank you. So the software engineer, you would like to give a response. Please come forward. 
your name and your point. Um, okay, so I would like to answer your question. Okay, my name is Obafemi Oluwatoduni. I would like to answer your question. You said um, opposing artificial intelligence as a software engineering student is killing my job. No, let me tell you why. If I need someone to develop a website for me, I have to pay the person to develop a website. Oh, okay, instead of spending money, why not just go to chat GPT and type, develop a website for me, and it brings it out. How is that killing my job? Rather than defending it, because, <laughs> no, see, leave, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Aside from chat GPT, AI itself, like I said, it makes things 10 times better, 10 times faster, 10 times more efficient. Now, I am a human being. I'm going to school for about four or five years to learn software engineering. Meanwhile, like someone said, there's an AI that can do what I do in like three minutes. Meanwhile, I'll spend months developing something, develop, developing a piece of software, and you're telling me that opposing that thing is killing my job? No. Thank you very much. Any further question or remark? Okay, I have a hand, please come forward. If you have a question, you could just come to my right hand side. Please start by introducing yourself and you have one minute, please. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Baba Ali Paul. Uh, my question is to the Adelike University foreign level law students. Um, you said we should encourage AI. I want to ask you in a situation whereby AI goes against the rules on ground, Looking at US, um, Israel, Ion's Dome, when there's a bug and it goes against Rule 8 and Rule 54 of the ICRC, what are we to hold against such acts? Is it the AI itself, the machines, or the programmer? Sorry, um, it was directed to the um, law student at Adelike, so please, to defend. He's asking who is to be blamed the AI developer that came against the law or who? Following the law laws, I'm not really familiar with that. <laughs> Do you want to answer or you're training to the house? Okay, please come forward. I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry everyone. Um, please, I stand to be corrected regarding your question. You're asking um, who is to be blamed regarding um, the effect of AI, right? The breach. the breach of the breach in law regarding AI. So number one, I need to state before everyone here today, problems with AI as a result of humans' faults. Human intelligence itself has faults. So the, it was the development of AI cannot be hundred percent efficient. That is why we are seeking its development. Okay, wait, wait, calm down, please calm down. And and plus that. And plus that, the regulations and that are going to be enforced on artificial intelligence should not be, are not supposed to be place a restrictment on its development. That is, the, that is what we are arguing today. Should not place a restrictment on its development, but rather the restrictment of its usage. It's because it's the proximity of human minds that makes the artificial intelligence to do some certain things, just like war crimes, breach of cyber security. It's the proximity of human minds. So there should be legislation on the people, the users of the AI, or the usage of the AI. I think the law student wants to defend herself. So please, when she's done, please, one minute. So I think everybody knows the popular phrase, garbage in, garbage out. What you input into artificial intelligence is what it gives back to you. So when you input the ability to break laws or to break rules and regulations that have been set in place, artificial intelligence will obviously give you back what you have given to it. That is just my answer. Thank you. Please, just one minute. We have a series of questions, so please. I think I'll hold the mic to restrict the... Um, okay, thank you very much. You said... What you give back, what you give into AI is what AI will give to you. But do you know what bug is? And my friend here made mention of just one error. It's not intentional. It happens with coding. Um, I think this man is in best position to explain how bugs and codes enter into machines. And if you know about Ion's Dome, it's a self-defense system in Israel that is meant to tackle security issues. But when it is secu um, security issues, when there's no security issues, and we have rules on ground, 
that is being breached. My question again, which you are yet to answer, who are we to blame? These are international rules that we should not go against. I mean, Rule 8, rule eight and Rule 54 states or talks about um, human objective and military objective in a war situation. So when you are developing AI, and you are saying you should keep encouraging development of AI, and these are going against laws and rules that are on ground, who are we going to blame? Who are you going to put the fault upon? Is it the programmer that does not have intention of putting bugs, and bugs got into the system, or the AI itself? I mean, can you sue a machine to ICC or ICJ? Please answer my question. Thank you very much. Okay, I think I'll just answer based on what the moderate, what she has said. She said garbage in, garbage out. So I don't know if that still makes sense, what you said. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I think we'll start from the line. Oh, you want, okay, sorry. Please pardon the question. Um, my only question is, if your argument is, humans can never be, humans' intelligence is, is flawed, right? Your argument is humans are the one at fault. And yet your argument still states that AI cannot create AI. Meaning, if a human is, that intelligence is already at fault, is creating AI, then AI will always be flawed. So where will, so if your development, if you are saying you should, we should encourage development of AI, are you also saying we, that human intelligence should be developed in a way, who develops human intelligence then? Sorry, please, I just, we have a great line here, so let's, let's just start with, please come forward. We'll get back to this, we'll get back to this. Um, thank you very much, my name is Olokai Odele and I work with a company called WebSense Africa and we're developing a product called Oak to help integrate high school students to, um, to help them find their positions in the future of Oak. Now they said that it will um, erase jobs, but statistics have shown that about 83 million jobs will be erased by AI and that 97 million will be created by AI. So that already disproves your facts already. Dr. Fred, I'll ask you a question. Do you have children in, sec in primary schools or secondary school? Primary school. Do you know your child will be working in jobs that don't exist yet? So as human beings, we should not be scared of AI. Rather, we should integrate. Do not be scared of integration. Human beings are always scared of integration. You see, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something now. Type people, sec certain secretaries talk to typewriters when computers came. They said, I will not learn how to do this computer. They talk to typewriters. But guess what? They lost their jobs because they were scared of integration. So the more you are scared of integration, you lose your job. But if you can integrate, then you have a job in the future of work. Thank you. Thank you. So the information getting here is we'll be focusing on those debating for now. So if you are set to um, answer the questions, so that's to the audience that are the queue here. We are very sorry. We're focusing on those debating to ask questions against each other. So to answer his question, please come forward. Um, first of, okay, my name is Wisdom Daniel, um, Landmark University. Uh, first of all, I'd like to answer the question of my opponent about how ChatGPT, about the um, artificial intelligence, creating artificial intelligence, based on what I said earlier. Now, mind you, what I said was talking about the ChatGPT that has not been released yet to the world. I've had a com um, conversation with one of the developers, and that is what they are currently working on. Currently working on how you can use ChatGPT to develop and produce, um, build artificial models. So we are getting to the point where our current artificial intelligence is built to build other artificial intelligence. I would also like to answer the question on garbage in, garbage out. Mind you, my supporting teammate said that artificial intelligence does things 10 times better, 10 times faster, and 10 times more efficient. Now tell me, if you impute an error into the, um, into the AI model, is it not going to produce the error 10 times better? Is it not going to increase the error for you? Now, so why should we continue the development of artificial intelligence? Thank you very much. I'm very sorry to bring this to an, an end, but this question and answer will be continued in the second segment. We have to move forward. Thank you. Thank you and thank you. Thank you for that wonderful question and answer. I mean, it was an awesome interactive session. Thank you for that wonderful one. So to get us for the, the round two, it's about time for the round two. And just like we said earlier, every school is going to send one person to speak summarily on all that they have said. Those who are for and those who are against. And you have just one minute for that.
But just before then, I would like to give the mic to the panelists. Maybe they have one or two things to say before we go to the second round. Oh, okay, thank you so much. I think they're giving us the go ahead to just have the second round. All right, uh, just like we have the first set of, the first university is um, Afe Babalola University. Please, can we have our timer up? They just have one minute to give us a summary of their support for. Standing on existing protocols, I am here to say that AI should be developed and the encouragement of AI development should be paramount. Number one, I'm going to say that the argument of my decisions are flawed because yes, with a creation of a new technology would create certain, certain debt of certain career. Now I need to say that the birth of the computer led to the death of the typewriter. That doesn't mean that we will move forward. And policymakers and government objectives are having the tax to create jobs, to, make, to give policies that encourage people to dive into these technological areas. Number two, empathy. The problem of the artificial intelligence is that of the human problem, is that of a human problem, because that a machine does what the human wants to do. And now the proximity of a human mind should be the one that is regulated and not the restriction of development, because yes, there are latches. But according to Bill Gates, the, the, the problems can be subsidized if we move forward with development and, pro and the placement of proper legislation and ethical measures. On this note, I rest my case. Thank you. Thank you very much, Afe Babalola University. Can we have Redeemers University, Ron? All right, first of all, I did not introduce my department. I am Vicente Adioshe, computer science student of Redeemers University. Are we... I will first of all take the, the statement that the argument are flawed because looking at the debate, I saw statements that are not backed up with credibility. So they are cherry picked content that you can get off the web. Now, if you look at the reason why we should oppose AI, AI, like I've stated before, one of those crucial things is that it leads to progressive deterioration of human intelligence as a result of over reliance on artificial intelligence. Some of these things that we see today, if we depend so much on them, we discover that even our lifestyle, everything when it comes to intellectual growth will be traded for just grades. And the implication on the society is that it's going to affect our well-being on the long run. On this note, I state, discouragement does not mean artificial intelligence should be cancelled. On this note, I conclude that artificial intelligence must be well regulated, must be discouraged with discretion. And if it is used at all, it must be used within the boundaries of well established regulatory policies with ethical and moral awareness in mind. Thank you. Welcome, Thomas Adeomi University, to give their concluding points. <laughs> Um, okay, my name is Abafemi Oluwatodini, once again. Um, like I said, at humans are developing robots, artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence is like a virtual human being. We are giving them the abilities of a human being. Now, remember that human beings have the ability to grow, develop themselves, and evolve. We have the ability to evolve. Now, let me ask you this. Artificial intelligence, the base knowledge the base knowledge before they are evolving is, let me say the knowledge of Albert Einstein. You have that kind of knowledge. So let me ask you this. Would you have the knowledge of Albert Einstein and remain a servant forever? Thank you very much. Can we make welcome Adeleke University for their concluding point? Please put your hands together for them. Once again, all protocols duly observed, Adi Amira Adi doing. I want to let us know that quite a number of technological advancements around us are tools of artificial intelligence. For example, the stopwatch, around, the stopwatch right here that we're all looking at. The world we live in is one that advances every day. If today we stop developing, developing artificial intelligence, where would that put us as a nation in the next 10 years? Also, I want us to know that if today we take away the development of artificial intelligence. 300,000 researchers, 22,000 AI specialists, and about 28,536 AI engineers will lose their jobs, according to an article on Google by AI specialists. Thank you. For the concluding points, can we make welcome the Hosh University, Landmark University, for their concluding points?
standing on already established protocols, I would like to pose a question here. I think some of the co-debaters that have come here, they don't really understand the concept of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, it's not a programmed code. It's based on data given to humans. It learns on its own, just like we have toddlers that learn by the precepts and examples of their guardians. Artificial intelligence learns from humans' data. Data is the word here. What am I saying? Artificial intelligence manifests itself in areas such as racism against people of color. My co-counterparts have talked about intellectual laziness. And I'm here to tell you, how many of you are aware of the recent ban on chat GPT, on the advancement of artificial intelligence? This is, this is a sign to tell us that the development of artificial intelligence shouldn't be encouraged. Why place a ban on something you have created? That should show you that there's a hidden poison in disguise in artificial intelligence. Thank you. Please, a round of applause to all participating universities. They have done excellently well, and I believe you can agree with me. Please, can we appreciate Abwad Afe Babalola University, Redeemers University? Uh, Adeleke University, Thomas Adeumi University, and the host institution, Landmark University. Thank you and thank you. That was a wonderful presentation. And just before we take on the next item that we have here, quickly we'll be having a photo uh, session, and I would like to invite the co-debaters from all institutions. Please come forward. We'll be having a photo session. Please come forward quick, 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 quick. And we'd we'll love to invite the Dean of Student Affairs, the Deanery of Student Affairs to join them. A photo session. Please, let's make it sm snappy. Okay. Okay, please, let's come forward. Let's come forward. The Deanery of Student Affairs, please join the co-debaters. All the schools. Let's have the um, staffs from the participating universities please join them. Just hold on, just hold on. Staffs from participating universities, uh, staffs that follow the students, please join. Join. join.
student council. Thank you, panel. Georgia student council, please. Just a moment. Student council, please. Landmark University student council. that we have student council from other schools, please kindly join. Student council from other schools. Members of student council from other schools. Thank you very much. Please put your hands together for them. Thank you. You could go back to your seat. Thank you. You're the same God. You're the same God. So while we await our final results, we'll be having the wordcasters to present. Then after that, I know we have a series of questions still bubbling in our minds. After the presentation, we'll take questions and answers again, but right now we'll be welcoming the wordcasters for a presentation. Please put your hands together. Please come forward for your presentation. Thank you. again like to welcome all the respective universities and management that are around and we hope that you enjoyed this piece i can guarantee that this piece was not used with chat gpt it was purely from my brain <laughs> thank you progression or recession exploitation or sedation to the pros and to the cons where all our answers will equal to zeros or ones 
To live a life as a terminator in fear of artificial intelligence or to live a life of peace knowing that Siri will forever pay me reverence. Give a man power and they will show you who they are. Give a man skills to change the world and they will go far. So don't blame me when I think my microwave will attack me at 3 a.m. and my smart home falls into mayhem. No, no. We can't let the bad outweigh the good. Automated ways of life. No need for meddlers. To the houses, to the cities, to the cars, to the bikes, no need for peddlers. And I'm sure at least half of us in this room here want to buy some Teslas. From the stone age to a new phase, who gets the glory, who gets the praise? Are we bound to these devices or are we set free? Because I have a servant and that's chat GPT, but sometimes I think it's my master, so I'm stuck in this misconceptual reality. Pandora's box is the situation that we are all in, both in paradise and both in pandemonium, and we can't see in. The answer is to go, but the answer is to stay. The answer is yes, but the answer is no. Your perception of six might be different from mine, and to artificial intelligence, it might as well be a nine. But let's think about it like this. Evolution. Evolution is a key concept for growth in this generation. Change and change must come. And every time we come in a new particular way, we see a difference in what we do. From the Big Bang Theory to the discovery of electricity, we have made lives, we fine-tuned lives to a simple way that we live in. We have seen things develop from a new system. But what is this change? Is it the system that could make the dream of becoming an Iron Man a possibility to me, or could bring an ultra-like prob probability to this world? Or a system that could make us create a new genesis, or could make us terminators of our own world? The pros and cons could list from one to the end. So I'm not here to pretend that sometimes evolution does not lead to extinction, or that integration and innovation cannot lead to devastation, no. Because there's a thin line between good and evil, all the gray areas included. So, I could make a strong argument against. I could make a compelling case for. But remember, it's those who speak the best that wins it all. We can put our hands together more for that beautiful presentation. So, we're now in for the question and answer. But we need to do this in an orderly manner. So if you have a question, you raise your hand. And I'm going to just select five persons for now. And then if the panel of judges are not done, we'll select another five persons to give their questions. And then those responding to the questions, you have a limited time. And the moment the mic is taken away from you, then your point is done. So the first five persons, I'll pick in no particular order. I'll pick from each segment of this hall. So I can see a hand there, that's number one, so you can come forward. From here, that's a girl, right? I would like to pick a guy. I can see a guy in a white shirt at the back, that's number two. And then from here, I can see one at my front, that's number three. From here, I can see another guy here, that's number four. And I can see a lady at the extreme back on a red, that's number five. So we still have another segment. So please come forward fast. If you're ready, please come. Okay, please come forward. Your name, the question, and then in response, you could also raise your hand. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Epe Young Fever Moses, 400 level physics. My question will come later. Um, artificial intelligence is a very beautiful creation, but in the, in the context of creation, whatever is created, the flaws of the creator are imputed into the creation. Whatever we are creating as humans, we tend to include our flaws into it. And artificial intelligence is a system that works on ones and zeros, wrongs and rights, no in-betweens. How do you regulate an artificial intelligence when you do not even understand yourself? How do you put so, um, enough boundaries for it to act and not overact? In a, in a situation where you, are, you ask an artificial intelligence to judge a case, if it is a human judge, there is empathy and there is sympathy, but an artificial intelligence has none of those. 
in the thank you in the case of humans humans are god's artificial intelligence when we were about to go over our boundaries god changed our languages in order for us not to be able to over communicate with ourselves to bring mayhem how do you regulate the language of the artificial intelligence which you do not even understand in order for them not to come together and destroy you one day after Thank you. So please, we'll just take one response. The first hand I see. No hand. We are for what she said. Okay, I can. I saw one hand. Just in 30 seconds. Just thank you. Please come forward your name. And then if you're not of landmark, just say your school and then. My name is Chema Somtochu, and I am from Afebu Alola University. So the question, the summary of what she asks is, how do you regulate a system? The best way to regulate it is to regulate the humans, the maker of such. The best way to regulate it is to regulate the humans, that is, whoever makes an artificial intelligence, whoever makes a robot, whoever makes anything, you regulate it. You cannot, that's the best way because if you are holding a person accountable for it, the person has the power to stop it, the person has the power to continue it. So regulating the person that controls it puts a limit on people to carry out other innovative ideas. That's the best way to control it. Thank you very much. So the second person, please come forward quickly. Please, we should step forward here so it's easy. So if, you're, if you've been selected, just stand to my right. All right, uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Ekoma Bongbasie Deme, 400 level computer science, Landmark University. I just want to stress the fact to Afe that, please, there's a difference between robots, software, and artificial intelligence. These are three different categories on their own, and it seems that you are mixing a few of them because software is designed, is basically a robot for devices. It is designed to solve a problem, simple. Artificial intelligence is something that grows and can think on its own and can mimic human-like uh, reaction. So when you're saying something like, okay, like the stopwatch here is artificial intelligence, it's not. It is software. It is not uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Thank you very much. That's not a question, so I will not take a response. So the next person, please come forward. Your name, your school, and then your question. Thank you. I'm Victor Odulate, a 500 level law student of Udimaz University. And I have three questions. Uh, the first one is thrown at those that are supporting. All of them are thrown at those that are supporting, but specifically the law students among them. And the first question is based on the question, is a century-old question, who is a person in law? Because you said uh, artificial intelligence can do this, can do that, but when they do these things, how do we regulate them? How do we uh, act on them? For example, there is the whole idea of um, DAL-E, developed by Microsoft, that um, covers, that mimics, uh, it can generate an image from text, basically. But in order to do this, it has to learn from a broad range of other samples. Now, that, is, that can be seen as a copyright um, infringement. But how do you regulate something like that? Who do you punish for that? It's the artificial intelligence that did that, but who do you regulate for that? When artificial intelligence is also makes copyright, who is the owner? Because you can't own if you are not a person in law. That is the first question. Who is a person in law as regards artificial intelligence? The second question is, what exactly is artificial intelligence? And give me a working definition, a widely accepted definition, and then tell me how the things you call artificial intelligence are artificial intelligence. Don't just say it, back it up. <laughs> then the third question is pretty simple. I heard you mention SDGs, especially life on land and you know, relating to the environment and poverty. How exactly does artificial intelligence improve these things or work towards the attainment of these goals? I understand the attainment is not the point. It's all about getting closer to it. But we know that, I mean, my phone processes. When it processes, it gets hot. We need fans to cool it down. So now imagine artificial intelligence that is functioning as a human being would. Do you know how many servers you need? Do you know how many fans you need? Do you know how much electricity you need? This will be brought by fossil fuels that are damaging the environment. So how then 
does artificial inf um, intelligence benefit the environment? Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to just speak a different person that has not spoken. So please, in one minute, so we could take all the questions. Good afternoon, House. Uh, I feel the problem with people is that we don't want to take responsibility of our actions. God created man, and man committed sin. Man made robots, and robots have flaws. Now you want to stop the existence of robots or artificial intelligence. Why don't you think God should stop the existence of man? Thank you. So the question was directed to a law student. So a law student should just come forward. Please, because of time, please come forward. Thank you. Decoron, please. Thank you. So the question I want to answer is the question you related to the SDGs. Okay. So a research showed that countries that have high emission, like for instance, Nigeria that makes use of fossil fuels, our main use is fossil fuels. You do realize that like in 10 years time, we are moving into renewable energies. There are conventions that are being established for renewable energies to move to that, like solar energies, um, water waves, hydro waves, and all those things. That's where we are moving into. Now, when I mean artificial intelligence can accelerate the accomplishment of all these SDGs for 2030 and 20, is the fact that if at this point, the majority of Nigerians are using AI-powered motors, yes, fine, they are going to take more electricity, but then we have a constant supply of this solar energy, the sun. We have a constant supply of water that is, like for instance, if you look, Lagos State is, is more populated with water distance than the houses there. That is where we can generate, we can use that. I know, I know, calm down. I get, I get, I get. So yeah, the issue is not about whether this can happen. The issue is also making sure that it can happen. Lagos State has a lot of water bodies. What are they using it to do? We don't even use it for ferries. We don't even use it for anything. This can be used to develop ways ways to make renewable energies. We have other water dams in this country that are not being made. They're just there, used as dumping sites for toxic waste and all. All those things can be used as renewable ways to like, yeah, that's basically. Okay, just one minute, please. We need to wrap this up and go to the next person. Um, you made mention of Nigeria moving towards renewables in 10 years. I would like to believe that there are several first world countries that are more than 30 years ahead of um, Nigeria as regards um, technology generally. I need you to mention five nations that use 60% renewable energy, just five. There are 194 plus nations, mention five. Congo like half of every year and throughout my stay in Congo we didn't use anything like gens or anything what we used was like electricity that is hold on, that is what like they focus on and other countries Japan you can I mean you could use how many Sorry, please just one minute. That's this is a concept of development. We are not yet there. You are not yet there. That is why we are advocating for the development of these AIs. Because with more development, all these problems, each and every one of us are stating about the AI, cyber security, crime and war and everything, can be re resolved with development. Besides, once upon a time, we could hack your systems, your HPs, we could hack them, but now with development of the firewalls, it makes it harder. Like, are you not? I just want to like, Please, this question needs to be. Please, the last person, and then okay. these arguments can be done outside the doors of this ICC. Thank you. Okay, so he asked, he, he asked as a law student who is a legal person, someone that can sue and be sued in his or her own name. 
Now, a human is that, right? But artificial intelligence is not. But let's not forget the concept of vicarious liability that makes a person responsible for another person for what he has done, another either next an or his own creation. Someone that is under you, hold on. Someone that is under you. Someone that you have control over. That is what. Someone that you have control over. Someone. Someone or something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have the mic? Thank you. Thank you. Please, can we head back to our seats? Wait, wait, thank wait. you. Vicarious thank you, is it Rob? Can I say something? Just thank you, thank you. Okay, can I? Thank you, is up, thank you, please. Is up, thank you. Thank you very much. Like I mentioned, the arguments can be continued outside. Thank you, please come forward. Good day, everyone. I'm Babalala Triumphant, 500 level EIA. So um, it's not really a question, it's just a remark. So I think the supporting team, we are confusing a lot of things about AI that is not, which I was expecting to see, but didn't happen. So um, I want to talk about a few things. Now, the boundaries of any artificial intelligence system is the data. So let's say you are training a model to be able to detect um, typewriting errors. That um, artificial intelligence cannot do anything other than that. That's the boundary. And secondly, I believe to a certain extent that artificial intelligence, the development of artificial intelligence should continue and not stop, but only regularized. So UNESCO had this meeting two weeks ago where they were looking at stakeholders and AI practitioners to come up with solutions in how you can bound the development of AI, because to a certain extent, imagine I sit down in my room and I make a deep fake like the opposing team said, you can't say whether it's true or not. So who you are supposed to hold responsible for any faults in the AI agents is the person that designed that AI. And also, I feel, sorry, I feel some of us just go online and read things that are not true and come to defend. Um, Bill Gates was asked a question, I think that was last month in an interview where he supported the development of um, coronavirus vaccine with a lot of money. And the person that was interviewing him asked a question. He said, are you a, law, are you a health practitioner? He said, no. So what gave him the right to develop vaccines? Do you get it? You are hearing information from the wrong set of people. Go to the guys that have seen the behind, the back end of these AI systems. Tell you, this guy is just, sorry, they are just mathematical laws and functions. Hallelujah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, and one last thing. Um, they said change is messy at the beginning. It's a little bit clearer at the middle, but it's beautiful at the end. So we should continue, but only regularized. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we'll take the last question, and then we'll take a comment. After the question, please, thank you. Please come forward, the lady in the red sweater. Thank you. Your name, your university, and your question. Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Daniel Fate Toluwanimi from the Department of Medical Laboratory Science, Thomas Adeomi University. And I, my mom always tells me something. If you want to catch someone, catch someone here and not here. I caught someone. Someone came up and said, the people that displace integration, they've been displaced from their jobs. Yes, sir. You just defined AI as a replacement to humanity. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will take one another comment. Good, good afternoon. Um, um, it's Koko Bina Charles from Afe Babalola University. I'm a 400 level farm D student. Now, um, we have been, all of us have been talking about AI, and I've noticed that. A lot of us are going down to the, just the engineering aspect. But one thing we don't understand is, understand is if we stop the development of AI, the COVID vaccine would have not come about. Now, let me school you on how the COVID vaccine was brought about. Now, the COVID vaccine is an mRNA vaccine. Now, there's something called genome-wide association studies. It's able to gather up to a million people check the genes that they have, and check the particular gene that is more dominant in, for the cause of a disease. That's why someone can go to the hospital and they'll tell you, oh, stop taking this. If not, you have cancer in the next 10 years. 
Now, that computer-based you know, photo ligand is done by an AI. Now, would you tell me now, because some people would lose their jobs, we would keep quiet and allow millions to die of COVID. The malaria vaccine that have been brought about, that was soon Nigeria has legalized to bring into Nigeria, was brought about by the screening of phytochemicals through an AI technology. Now, so if we decide, oh, we don't want to um, develop AI, then it means that we are trying to go back in time whereby it's herbalists that still give us drugs. And, um, okay, um, the last thing I want to say is we are being too sentimental. We, when in making decisions in life, it's about risk to benefit ratio and the efficiency. Now, would you tell me that because you have a computer that can file, that has this, um, everything stored about every patient, I can give you this results within a second, then you will not sack the man that is keeping 1,000 files because, oh, he's going to lose his job. So you won't be efficient because you are being sentimental. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we'll take this person and then we have one more person before the panel comes forward. Okay, so I just want to establish something. We are not saying that AI should be scrapped or completely removed. We are just saying that it should be regulated. They should, they should set boundaries. Nobody is saying that we should completely remove AI. Uh, so we are saying that it should be discouraged with discretion. We can still have AI, yes, but it should be used as an assist, as, as assistant to not dominating over humans. Thank you. Thank you. The last, the last remark before the panel gives your final remark. Please come forward quickly. You have just 30 seconds. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Oluwabi Nicole from the Department of Accounting 400 level. Um, my remark is towards the people that were supporting. I don't believe you can use the um, job opportunity as a um, comment or something to support your motion because for example, now I'm in the Department of Accounting. Naturally, technology has reduced the workload from 44 people to like 24. So when you bring in AI or you integrate AI into our careers, you reduce it from 24 to one. Now, you want to tell me that I'm studying for four years and I'll come out and I'll hear that there's technology that's going to take over my job. Now, you said a few number of people that are going to lose their jobs, researchers, people developing. Can you compare it to the number of careers and other job opportunities that will be displaced? Thank you. Thank you very much. This was indeed a beautiful question and answer session. Can you put your hands big, big together for yourselves? Thank you. So I'm sure the panel of judges are ready to give our judgment. So let's welcome the Chief Judge, Professor Adishigiri. Thank you. I have so many donations here. AI donations. Well, um, the time is far spent. We are already in the afternoon, so good afternoon to you all. Uh, I am going to finally uh, give you the summary of this course. But before I do that, you may not quote me on this. And uh, please, ladies particularly, I'm prostrating, forgive me. Um, they said, I wasn't there, that there were issues with Adam and Eve. Okay, so, you know, Eve was an unsolicited gift. Okay, God was the one who said it is not good for man to be alone. So, he brought Eve. And Adam was so very, very happy. You understand? After a couple of hundred years, okay, he went back in annoyance and said, See, this unsolicited gift that you gave to me, I am not sure I can cope. Okay, ah, God said, you know God in, uh, in his infinite mercy said, okay, if come and sit down. Adam, they go. After another couple of hundred years, Adam went back and scratched his head and said, ah, 
Uh, God, that gift that we were talking about, the other thing, uh, I don't know. Can I have her back? God said, no problem, okay? Uh, if follow your husband, okay? After some other couple of hundred years, Adam was so livy. See, even if I come back any time and all the other things, just take, 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 take. God, in his infinite mercy and patience, said, Adam, come back. I mean, Eve, sit down. Then, after some more, much more time, I think Adam has become wise. And he went back in humility. He said, God, let's be frank. Okay, you see this gift you gave to me. I cannot live with it, and I cannot live without it. Okay, so is the issue of artificial intelligence. <laughs> we talk about development. It's savings in terms of time, space, fund, efforts. Okay, so... For development, you must optimize. In optimization, you must find a way of increasing the efficiency. These are the things that we have to grapple with for us to ensure sustainability. So, it is said that when you stop learning, you start dying. And so, the summary is such that artificial intelligence is here. Why is it artificial intelligence? You can make it to take decisions on its own, and it keeps on going. The issue of uh, the pros and cons is a function of the window that you are looking at it. All right? And... Uh, the most and the best that God created, which is human, all right, is such that there are good people and there are bad people. Is that the reason why we should not have people? God himself gives allowances. He told uh, um, he, um, Israel, and Israel told his children, your children are going to be here one 400 years. It's recorded, but eventually they spent 430 years. That means there is an allowance that is being given. So everybody that are made an argument for and against, you have very good points, and I congratulate you. <laughs> However, I want you to know that the essence of your coming here is to learn from the two sides of the coin. Okay, whatever it is that you are using and you are not using responsibly is going to cause a harm. Um, there is only one aspect that I've not tried, but they said excess of anything is bad. I don't know if the excess of goodness is bad as well. I don't know, but Yoruba people, there are quite a number of Yoruba people here. Yoruba person? Okay. Uh -huh. I, please help me to translate to other people. The Yoruba people said, Ore ni won. So, you know, these are the issues. And so, um, Avon, Avon rambled this way. Um, we found out that all of the universities are within the same bracket. There may be a little bit off here and on there. After Babalola University, after we have taught about a whole lot of things, okay, they came out with 50.75 points. <laughs> Redeemers University. 56.64 points. <laughs> Thomas Adewumi University, 51.47 points. 
Adeleke University, 54.48 points. And Landmark University, 50.00 points. Thank you. I hope somebody is going to pay me. Yes. All right. So uh, from the records that I have here, OK, there are gifts for the first, the second, and the third. So uh, can Thomas Adeumi University come in for the third prize winner? <laughs> So um, since uh, I have done this, I think the organizers have uh, presentation. So let me leave it out for the other thing. Uh, by inviting also the Dean of Student Affairs to join the podium. Can I go or I stay? Thank you very much, sir. Okay, for the third position, we have at DDK University. And you have a cash prize of 20,000 Naira and your award. Thank you. Please come forward to take a picture and the award. Sorry. Thomas Adeumi University. Sorry. And then for the second position, we have Adeleke University. Please come forward. And with the representative, and they have, plus the award, they have a cash prize of 30,000 Naira. Please come forward to take a picture. You can put your hands together for them. It's not easy. Thank you. Please just stand in front of the podium. Thank you very much. And to our very own winner of this debate competition, we have Redeemers University. Please let's give them a standing ovation. A standing ovation. Please let's rise for the winner. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please put your hands big, big together for them as they take the picture. And they have a cash prize of 50,000 Naira. Thank you very much. So quickly, before we take the vote of thanks and the closing, we'll be moving forward to the presentation of certificates for all the participants of this debate. 
And we'll be calling in no particular order. So we'll be starting with Ogonji Nicholas, and we'll be inviting the VCM to present this award, the certificate to. Please put your hands together. Thank you. Next up is Babawale Paul. Please, for the pictures, as we're taking it. The next up is Babawale Paul. Please come forward. It's not easy. Clap for them. They did an amazing work today. We can do better. Thank you. The next up is Ogenetega. Please come forward because of time. Next up, we have Egere Gospel. Please, as you are called, just come forward. After Egere Gospel, we have Efe Wonder, so just come out in that order. Egere Gospel, sorry, Egere Gospel first, then Efe Wonder. If we wonder, that's how it thank is. you. Because we have our strengths and weaknesses. Oh, I have vision. After that, we'll be welcoming the student chaplain mail to give another order of um, the certificates. Daniel Shekete, please come forward. I don't know if I got the name right. Please come forward. Thank you. Next, we have Makinde Olua Shegun. Please come forward. Next, we have Ademoye Amira. Ademoye. Yes, thank you. And when I fall down, I have to pick my. Next, we have Aladeloye Olua Kwelumi. Please, sorry for the mispronunciations of your name. Thank you. Next, we have Babalola Victor. Please come forward, Babalola Victor. Okay, thank you, student chaplain male. Please, let's welcome the student chaplain female. We have Oladako Emmanuel. Please come forward, Oladako Emmanuel. Please clap for them. It's not easy. It's not easy. Chiwete Clara, please come forward. Chiwete Clara. Stand up for the champions, for the champions. Stand up for the champions. I will not do Emmanuel. Please also get ready for your own um, certificate. If you're present, please come forward. I will not do Emmanuel. After this, we'll be inviting the vice chairperson female to present the certificate. Chima Somto Chuku, as we welcome the vice chairperson female. Chima Somto Chuku. Thank you, the student chaplain female. Etukoro Obina Charles, please also come forward for your certificate. Thank you. Please, we can still be clapping for them. Thank you. We have Victor Ajedare. Please come forward for your certificates too, Victor Ajedare. Okay, we have um, Safira. Safar Safira, please come forward if that sounds like your name. I have to pick myself back up. And when I fall down, we have Ade 
Schägung Vincent. Then after this, we'll be welcoming the chairman, student council to present the rest of the certificate after this picture. Oludele Blessing, please come forward. The chairman, thank you, sir. Oludele Blessing, please come forward. Thank you. We have Efe Wanda David. Victor Ajedere, if you're around, please just come forward. So I think that's a wrap. So let's put our hands big, big together for them. Let's put our hands big, big together for them. And we'll also, okay, Victor. Number one and nothing less Lead me to my destiny I have waited patiently I have vision though I believe I know I can count on me So stand up for the champions For the champions Stand up, stand up, stand up so we'll be welcoming the Student Council Chairman for his remarks for this debate. Please put your hands together for him as he steps forward. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. And how have been your day so far? Well, my name is Oshoba Daily Elijah, the privilege Landmark University Student Council Chairman, 2022-2023. It's a great thing to have a hall. And what we have here is that um, it's not just competition. All of us that were here, we are hall winners. <laughs> and, and I want you to know that um, we have been able to come together to bring ideas together and discover policy that can promote sustainable development in our world today. We line in a, a, a fast-growing world of technology and in which technology is the new order of the day. And there is, there is, there is a reason for us to include, for an inclusion of people that are vulnerable to this and what you have done is that we've been able to enlighten everyone present today thank you so much for coming i want to use this opportunity to appreciate the management for making this to happen without them this will have not been a success and for the management from other universities thank you for releasing your student thank you so much we love you all and we wish you safe journey back home thank you Thank you very much. We can put our hands big. We're ready about to close the curtain of this beautiful inter-school debate, but I would love us to welcome our sub-dean, Student Affairs, for the vote of thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. My assignment this afternoon is to give the vote of thanks. And first and foremost, I'd like to appreciate God Almighty for making this day reality. He himself enabled the Landmark University Student Council under the leadership of the Director of Student Affairs to organize this inter-school debate competition. Also, we appreciate the proprietors of Landmark University for creating an enabling ambience for teaching, learning, research, and extracurricular activities in this amazing university. Equally, we appreciate the management of Landmark University for the approval and support to organize this event. Furthermore, we deeply appreciate our indefatigable panel of judges for bringing their wealth of experience to for in situating the debate competition as appropriate. The Director of Senate Affairs appreciate the management of Redeemers University, Affair Babylon University, Adelike University, and Thomas Adi University for approving the participation of their students 
in these inter-school debates. This approval, in no doubt, has culminated to the knowledge gathering and has helped in fostering good relationship amongst the participating universities. Likewise, we appreciate all the staff that accompany the participants for their time, efforts, and contributions in making these events a huge success. The students from all participating universities are equally deeply appreciated. This afternoon, we appreciate our noble students of Landmark University for your participation in this Maiden Inter-School Debate Competition. Lastly, this afternoon, we recognize and appreciate the initiative and efforts of our amiable Landmark University Student Council 2022-23 Academic Session for organizing this Maiden Inter-School Debate Competition. May the Lord continue to increase your knowledge in the name of Jesus. We wish our, particip our participants, Johnny Messies, back to your destinations in Jesus' name. Please kindly extend our warm regards to your university. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, the Subdean Student Affairs. So now we'll be inviting the Chancellor of Landmark University to give us the closing prayer. May we all rise. Shall we pray? Our righteous Father, we want to appreciate you for this moment. We appreciate you for the breath of life you've given unto us. Father, we say, be thou exalted, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of this, for the commencement of this program and bringing the program to close. That we will say, be thou exalted, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. We hereby pray for every participant of this debate. We pray, O Lord, that you, O Lord, will continue to increase them in wisdom and in knowledge in the name of Jesus. We pray, O Lord, that their brain will not be truncated in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, O Lord, that you, O Lord, will continue to grant them wisdom in the name of Jesus. That they shall be the change of the country we are waiting for in the name of Jesus Christ. We now pray that as they go, as they journey to their various uh, schools, that you, O Lord, will go with them in the name of Jesus. We shall continually to communicate in peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of this, because you have answered our prayers. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. There is no situation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, the Dean Student Affairs, the Sub Dean Student Affairs, and members of management for this event. But please, we'll be moving now. We have to wait behind. The Dean Student Affairs will be leaving this hall first. The, the Sub Dean Management, the invited guests, well, landmark should wait behind. Thank you very much for honoring us for the maiden edition of this inter-school debate. I remain your humble host, Olufemi Toluanimi. Thank you so much. There will also be a group picture for invited